I gotta say, guys, Cloudflare is one of those companies that pushes the envelope on 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 improvements and on efficiency on on the web security pretty much everything so uh, and this is just one other example of what they are trying to do they found a big limitation in the http2 implementation in nginx uh, which let me know that all oh, cloudflare uses nginx in their edge servers which is which is pretty cool but i'm going to discuss what are the First of all, what was the limitation in HTTP2 when it comes to upload speed, not download. We figured that out for a long time, right? But upload speed. And you're going to notice that even if, if, if you're going to notice that when you have a huge upload speed only. You're going you're gonna to see that um, there is boxing, right? There is limitation going on. Even if you have like a huge bandwidth. The HTTP2 can only do so much, and that's the only the engine X implementation. I'm pretty sure all proxies have this limitation, and this brings me to the same thing that I acquire and I say every single video. Building a proxy is absolutely difficult. Look at all these things. Building a proxy is difficult. So if you want to build a proxy, you stick to just being a proxy. Being a web server and a proxy is just too much in 2020. You cannot possibly, unless you have F5 uh, resources with Nginx, that's a different story. But look at this, guys. We, every day we find something specifically to proxying and something to give you a web server. So if your software manages to be both these things, you cannot possibly compete. It's, it will be very difficult for you to compete. So let's discuss this, guys. So this is the limitation in HTTP2. Let, let me show you what happened here. So they were doing uh, at an upload test. And compared to an HTTP 1.1 client, because the server supports both 1.1 and 2, uh, HTTP2, an HTTP 1.1 client could effectively have double the speed compared to the same workload on HTTP2. So you're a client and they test this with curl and that boy Daniel was so happy when he saw his little tool. Look at this. He's, used, he's testing this with tool. And this is, I love this in curl. You can just add an option and test with this, right? So that's how they tested that. So they noticed despite exact configuration that's the same web server that's the same um that's the same proxy essentially right configuration on http 1.1 if the client only supports http 1.1 which they simulate with curl right here then they noticed around this much uh, megabit per second right despite i mean look at this guy so yeah the total upload speed is around 200 uh, megabit per second that's the bandwidth but it can only go up to 40 that's because it's a theoretical speed you can never get to that speed right there is wires there is the limit of of latency there's software there is mechanical stuff in the middle there's barriers in the middle that slows you down right you can only go so fast so regardless http 11 achieved 40 and this one achieved half of the H2, despite H2 being the newer model. So what happened, guys? What happened here is because of something called the flow control, or, or what we call uh, TCP slow start. Remember we talked about that? Go, go ahead and check that. TCP slow start, or I call it TCP foreplay, is just the ability for the TCP layer to kind of taste the network. It's like, oh, can you handle this window size? Can you handle this much data? Can you handle this much data? And the and 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 the server will say, "Yup, yup, yup," or "Nope, that's too much for me." And they can foreplay and until they reach a agreeable window size and they start sending everything. And that's why the TCP slow start and that just to do the flow control because you kind of just send blah, pretty much everything. That the internet will just die. If you do that, if, you, if everybody just sent every single thing maximum, then we cannot possibly scale. 
So that's the flow control. TCP, just the TCP operating system deals with this stuff. We know how to deal with this stuff. We, right, like I built this stuff. Yeah, so Linux, Windows, all this stuff at the OS level, they deal with, with, with this flow control. So it's okay, let's assign this much buffer and then we'll increase it as the time goes. And with, as the time goes, this will increase because the, the server and, and the client will agree with that, right? That's when you're using HTTP 1.1, and we talked about that, right? HTTP 1.1 hijacks the whole TCP connection. There is no, there is no stream or multiplexing or any, any of that, right? When you have a TCP connection, you have HTTP 1.1 client, it just, it, that's it. You can send one request at a time, asterisk on that big asterisk and then wait for the result to come back right you cannot send seven requests on the same tcp connection i mean you can but there's the problem with pipelining which which is ugly so nobody actually does that maybe they do but regardless you have the whole tcp connection to work with and i talked about tcp guys check out the video if you want to learn more about it so and then based on that you can send that request and you can put in the body what you want to upload and slowly the TCP will start sending the body as chunks, right? And those chunks will increase in size based on the slow start and the flow control until the server says, yup, I got everything. With HTTP2, however, that does exist because it's still a TCP connection, but guess what? The request is sent on this virtual thing, channel that we call stream. So you reserve a stream and then you send your stuff in that stream. So the TCP stack is still doing, treating the stream as just a bunch of data and multiple streams as well. However, HTTP2 level flow control, that was capped and that was not exceeding. There is no auto tuning. There was no, Oh, let me, let me increase, let me increase. It was capped at 128 kilobytes, unlike the HTTP one. And, and this is clearly explained in this picture. So HTTP one, we have one buffer, one thing to deal with, and the TCP stack take care of this. However, in HTTP two, we take the initial window becomes the HTTP body pre-read size, but it can only go up to the maximum, which is whatever this thing is. Is it this value or this value? And for, for Cloudflare configuration, this was, I believe, 64, and this was 128. So they started playing with these numbers, and I'm gonna reference this article below if you wanna read more about it. But they started playing with these numbers. So, okay, this is the production, that's what we just saw, right? That's both where the initial size was 128, but HTTP 1.1 was relaying the flow control at the, at the low level, TCP OS level, which increase that, increase that, okay, obviously to, to the maximum uh, of that both the server and client can support. However, HTTP2 was capped at 128 kilobyte. That's maximum it can get because there was no knowledge. Nobody implemented this foreplay that we talked about at the stream level. It was capped at 128. That's it. It couldn't go more. So, so the pipe was begging you to go back more than 128 but you know we're stuck at 128 it's like wah, that's it so that's why we were suffering at the, at the HTTP2 so people of Cloud Freer, let me credit the author here so we don't forget Janu Choi I'm sorry if I butchered your name John Hu John Ho Choi actually started playing and increasing the maximum stream size for now this is the first thing they did they played with a static configuration so they increased to 256 so so the maximum thing you can get to is instead of 128 to 256 so we got better performance still not good as HTTP 1.1 because HTTP 1.1 has all the flow it can get it was, it was it, it, yeah it has a slow start but remember it, it had it was open the tcp stack was there for 20 30 years people built this stuff already the flow control, right? So it, it had the momentum to go beyond. However, 
when they change it to 512, look at this beauty. Woo! We got all up and there, even more than HTB11. But when we increased to 1024, we didn't get any, any, any benefits. I bet if we increase that to 400 or 500 or even more, then you will get but you'll see a big difference as you go there. So the Cloudflare team, here's what they did. And here's why I love this stuff. They said, how about, I don't want to do all that stuff. I, I, there's no good value to put here, to be honest, right? Because it depends on the bandwidth. So they built this. They built the auto tuning based on the request body buffer. This is so cool. They took Nginx open source. They built this feature, and I believe, they didn't mention that, they might push this feature to Nginx open source. I've seen some, some mentions on Twitter that say, hey, yeah, we, we're going to do that, but it depends on the Nginx community. But this should go into Nginx, and it should go into every, it should go into HA proxy, it should go into Envoy, it should go into Nginx, it should go to everybody. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they shared the source code, I believe. I, I, I'll i find it and put it in the description below. But they, what this does, this basically does the flow control based on the on the bandwidth and the body buffer size. And they're going to increase that based on the demand of the stream. So they essentially increase the window size, increase the flow control, so they can pump more content when you publish, publish when you upload certain uh, data, right? So that's only for the upload, right? And yeah, they actually implemented this thing and look at this. And, and, and yeah, this is now the auto tuning. With auto tuning, they got the best feature, right? I don't know why 256 won on this, but maybe with multiple tests, this auto tuning is the way to go, man. This is what you want. Auto tuning is the best. Right? Because that's I would like to auto-tune my stuff. Especially, guys, you might say, why do I care, uh, care about upload? How often do we upload? I talked about that a little bit. It is actually more than you expect. Especially that everybody now sitting at home, we're video conferencing all day. So we're uploading more content, right? For the longest time, all we, we do is go to google.com, hit enter. That's a tiny Biny upload because that's it is an upload, all right, right? Because you're sending a get request to google.com, providing the IP address and, and doing a TLS. Anything that goes from you to the server, that's an upload. But what is the size of that? It's it's negligible, it's nothing. But when you watch a movie, you're downloading. When you download content, when you download a page, you're downloading. So almost of the time, we download more than we upload. However, when you do video conferencing, when you play a video game, depends on the video game multiplayer play side, uh, uh, the algorithm used. If you're using the server uh, authoritative approach, then you, uh, you're gonna get more state changes delivered versus the lockstep approach where you basically send input to every other so that's a lighter version versus the server authoritative so yeah based on the i guess algorithm of the multiplayer your upload speeds might actually be more so yeah i was so thrilled by this article and it took me a little bit while and some questions to actually understand this thing guys so http2 is a new protocol and we're still improving and improving and improving this protocol guys it's a new thing and and comes back to things when we do one thing and do it really really well that's what we should do and i think nginx should follow the same uh, strategy and basically yeah we always we're gonna always improve and it took a pandemic to find this and notice and fix this otherwise you would not notice if, because who have a like a 200 upload speed i, I mean uh, on my computer on my machine i have like what 50 50 upload which is i don't really need that much but still it's 
pretty good. All right, guys, that's it for me today. What do you think about this change? What do you think about HTTP upload speed and, and this will lower level change, right? Let me know in the, uh, this, uh, in the comment below. I'm going to see you on the next one. Kudos for Cloudflare for sharing such great, amazing content. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.